State the final conclusion in simple non-technical terms. Original claim, the proportion of male golfers is less than 0.6. Initial conclusion, fail to reject the null. So fail to reject the null means that there was insufficient evidence um, to conclude that the uh, mm, proportion was less than 0.6. So there is not sufficient evidence to support the claim that the proportion is less than 0.6. If you reject the null, then you have evidence. If you don't reject the null, then you don't have evidence. Three years ago, mean price of existing single family home was this much. A real estate broker believes that existing home prices are lower so the null would be, so we are talking about mean price, so mu, null always has equals, and uh, we're talking about the price of 243,794. And the broker believes that the prices are lower so be the same means, lower means less than this number, 243,794. Okay, which is a type one error. Remember type one error is that null is true, but you reject it. So null was, that the price is equal to 243.794. So let's see which one is type one error. Rejects that the mean price is this, then the true mean price is, no. It means you reject it when that's the truth. So you reject it when the true price is actually this. Okay, the broker fails to reject, no. Mm. With the broker fails, no, the broker rejects the null um, that the mean price is this when that's the truth, right? So whenever you reject the null, but the null is the truth, then that's type one error. So the null was that the price is 243,794. If you reject that, um, but the price was actually that, then it means you made a type one error. which is a type two error. So remember type two error was that the null was not true, but you failed to reject it. Uh, so it means that the price was not this, but uh, you somehow didn't reject this idea. Uh, so it'd be a fail to reject. So fail to reject the hypothesis that the mean price is this when the true mean price is less, yeah. So if the true mean price is less than 243, but you fail to reject the hypothesis that it is 243, then you have made a type two error. Fail to reject the null when the null was not true. What happens to the probability of making a type two error better as the level of significance alpha decreases. So alpha is a type one error, beta is the type two error probability. So now, uh, if you want to reduce uh, alpha, which, which is a type one error. So let's take the example of that um, innocent or guilty. So alpha or the type one error will be that the person is innocent, but you, uh, say that they are guilty, that's a type one error. And now let's say you want to reduce this error, that's what we're talking about here. So reducing that error means that you want to make sure, very, very sure that no innocent person gets punished. So even if there's the slightest of doubt, then you let them go. So now a natural result of this will be that since you are mm, making very, very sure that the person is guilty, and you are um, basically letting them go with the slightest of doubt. 
So the natural result will be that many guilty people will also be set free because you are making so sure that uh, you have so much evidence. And sometimes you may not have enough evidence, but the person might be guilty. And so the result of decreasing type one error will be that you will increase the type two error. These two are inversely related. You can't have everything. Uh, if you want to make sure that innocent persons never get punished, the result will be that some of the guilty people will also uh, be set free. So type one and type two errors are inversely related. The probability of type two error increases. And they were saying what happens to type two error when type one decreases. So when type one decreases, type two increases. They are inversely related. Consider H naught, the defendant is not guilty. So that's what we've been talking about. So H naught is not guilty, innocent. And uh, H A or the alternative is that guilty. Explain in the context if the um, of the test if H naught is rejected. So if H naught is rejected, it means you are rejecting the innocence and you are saying you are going by the H A, which says guilty. So the verdict is guilty. But the null hypothesis, the defendant is guilty. No, the null hypothesis is innocent. Rejecting H naught implies null hypothesis, not guilty is true. Uh, no, you rejected it. So you didn't say that not guilty is true. You said guilty is true. Rejecting H naught implies null hypothesis, not guilty is false. Uh, the defendant is therefore found guilty and sentenced. Describe the consequence of a type one error. So type one error will be that you punish an innocent person. Result in an innocent defendant being set free, no. Result in a guilty defendant, no. Will result in an innocent defendant being convicted, yeah. Okay. Uh, what happens if you fail to reject H naught? So H naught was not guilty and you failed to reject it, which means you just went by it. You, your verdict was not guilty. Failing to imply that the null hypothesis not guilty is absolute null. This absolutely is uh, a shocking word. Uh, possibility would be more like it. A fail to reject implies that the null hypothesis not guilty is a possibility and therefore acquitted and set free. Yeah. We, we don't say absolute things in the court of law. <clears throat> so again, the same idea, we, we can't, whenever there's a choice between using very strong language and using like kind of mild language, you always go for the mild language. You don't say it's absolutely true, but you say it's a possibility. <clears throat> Describe the consequence of a type two error. So type two error will be that you let a, a guilty person go free. Uh, result in a guilty defendant being convicted, no. Result in a guilty defendant being set free, yeah. Type one, punish innocent. Type two, let guilty go free. Okay, that answer. Section. Mm. 